I just got this in the mail. And inside this box is a nozzle for a 3D printer. And inside the nozzle for the 3D printer is some really strange things. Ooh, uh, ooh it comes in a nice a tissue paper. There we go. There's the nozzle right there. It appears to be stainless, which is cool. I thought it was going to be brass. This bugger right here is a 2 millimeter bore nozzle for a printer that only has 1.7 millimeter filament. How does that work? There's some strange things going on in the inside that we're going to show you and talk about. But I'm excited about this. We're going to print some big stuff. We're going to print some strong stuff. And I've got plans for it. I'm finally going to use the whole volume of the printer that I have. So let's show you what's going on inside, and then we'll get to printing. So we're getting up close and personal to find out how we can squeeze out a gob of plastic that's wider than the plastic we're putting into it. And this nozzle has some little interesting detail going on in the inside, which I'm going to try to show you right now which is that the path for the plastic is split in two. So the plastic hits the hot end, it hits the heater block, it melts, and then it gets squeezed into this channel, split into two. My guess is so that there's enough surface area to heat up the plastic and then recombined into the thicker diameter on its way out the nozzle. Pretty brilliant little piece of technology right there. So we're going to get this guy set up in the printer. I'm rocking a TiVo Tornado. We're going to try to print some things that take advantage of the volume of that printer, because I haven't done that yet, and this seems like a fun way to do it. Before I get into the print quality and all of the settings that I found out, I have to talk about what it took to calibrate the machine to print properly with this nozzle. I've been on a long journey with this piece of hardware and I want to tell you the story. The first thing I did, as you do when you update any piece of hardware, is you do some calibrations. I was choosing to use a calibration cube over a bench sheet because I knew that I wasn't looking for aesthetics. The project that I'm working on, the project that these are parts for is going to be a parametric skateboard mold. So the four pieces that I printed can be joined together and used to press a deck. The surface finish of an object like that doesn't matter all that much as long as the structural integrity is there. So I started with calibration cubes. The first set of parameters that I was working with were print speed and flow rate. Um, and it became apparent very quickly that I was going to have to fine tune a lot more than that. Shortly thereafter, it got into playing with layer height and print temperature because the worry, my worry at that point was that I'm working with a regular heater block, just a normal uh, horizontal oriented heater block, and to melt the volume of plastic to fill out that two millimeter diameter, it's a lot of plastic for a machine like this to push through. So I toyed with jacking up the print temperature and hoped that I could push more liquid plastic down into the nozzle and also hopefully not burn the plastic. I was hoping to be able to have a tall layer height, but I quickly wound up somewhere around 0.5 mil. That's about as much plastic as I could push through this thing with the setup that I was using. Um, it was a little disappointing because I was hoping to have high layer lines and really just be able to crank out parts, but pushing enough plastic to have those layer lines was problematic. So after the cubes, I knew that I wanted a hollow part, and there were a bunch of details on the surface of the cubes, the letters, that um, I didn't care too much about, and they were kind of affecting the flow rate at the corners and stuff. I knew that the parts were, that I were printing were gonna be big, not have a lot of surface details, and have rounded corners. So I made a little test cylinder uh, that I did a, a whole bunch of further fine tuning on. And I got to a place where they started looking good. I was printing two walls on the cylinder because I was thinking that that was how I was gonna do it, but I kept running into this problem. I don't know if you can see the details there, but the inner wall and the outer wall weren't touching. Indicates two things to me. One is under extrusion, still, and the other was just the inner wall's thinner than the outer wall. What's going on there? 
I looked at my print setting and the default Cura setting is that the outer wall is printed at half the speed of any inner walls, which is the standard print speed. So I thought I was working somewhere around 12 millimeters a second, and the line that was printing and that was working was actually around six. So to print effectively, I had to work even slower than I thought I was. That was a frustrating thing to find out. I decided to back up to a single wall and completely avoid the problem of having the walls meet together. And we came across this guy, this calibration cube. And you know what? That looks good. We've got kind of consistent layer height. We've got, you know, a wall that is very firm and strong. And we can work with that. So I figured we'd try it out. Let's just double check and see how thick the wall is. There are places where it's 1.78. There are places where it's, it's 1.8. This is supposed to be a two millimeter thick wall. That's why the, the inner and outer walls weren't meeting together. So I decided to print a single width. And we I tried some experiments with that. I had even more trouble. I had serious warping of the parts coming off the bottom of the bed. But I figured, you know what, we'll push through. We'll figure it out. We're gonna print it with a flat bottom. And it'll still work. And then I took a caliper to check to make sure that the walls were printing at the thickness that I wanted. And the variance was unacceptable. There were places where it was hitting two, but most of it was sitting somewhere between 1.7 and 1.8. And I'm working with a flow rate of 115%, not 100.15, not 100.5, not 105, 115%. I got a suspicion that the firmware on my printer is limiting that, but I should be cranking out plastic. There's no way it should be under extruding. So what the heck was happening? I did a ton of research and one of the things that I came across trying to troubleshoot a different issue was that if you're working with like lower quality plastics, it can help to measure the diameter of your filament to make sure that it's actually what it's being sold as. The printer that I have takes 1.75 mil the plastic that I was putting into it when I measured it was 1.67. It was almost a full tenth of a mil off. And I guess when I was printing with the normal nozzle, that didn't make that much of a difference. The thing that I learned as I was calibrating this nozzle was that everything has to be perfect. It's not forgiving. A normal nozzle takes a pretty large diameter of filament, melts it down, and squeezes it out of a much smaller hole. There's all this volume to fill up with back pressure and you're working with the liquid at this point. So even if your parameters aren't quite right, there's almost no circumstances under which too little plastic is gonna come out of that because of your print settings, if they're close enough. This nozzle is taking the same volume of plastic, but pushing it through a larger hole. And I think what effectively happens is because of the geometry and math involved in that, any little variance or issues with your parameters gets magnified intensely. And this was the issue that made me realize that. The way the slicer works, it has an expectation of, of how much plastic is going into the nozzle. That expectation is your filament width. No matter what I did, no matter what settings I changed up until this point, I could not fix the problem of under extrusion because the machine thought it was pushing out more plastic than it was. Once I figured that out and I put the right plastic diameter in, all of a sudden fine tuning it became much easier. I was still getting some odd texture, which you can see kind of on the skin of this piece and still to some degree on the skins of these, I was still getting a little bit of under extrusion, but I managed to fix the tex texture issues uh, by baking the PLA. So another thing where it's like, it's a detail that like most of the time, a nice thing to do. It comes up on forums and resources as something that you can do to improve, improve your print quality. When that issue of, you know, kind of wet or old filament goes from affecting a variance in a, in a 0.4 millimeter line to something that's more than four times as big, that becomes a major problem. Small problems become large problems. That's what this nozzle does. <laughs> so I baked the filament. I made sure that I was measuring the filament that was going into the machine and I had that parameter right. And then I wound up with a bunch of settings where I was happy enough with the print quality and the speed for this to be a viable solution for the manufacturing challenge that I was coming across, right? So let me tell you about the settings that I wound up with. I was working at a 0.5 mil layer height. 
I was working at 210 degrees C for PLA. That's a little bit higher than I print normally, but it was working and not burning the PLA, so I'll stick with it. I have the flow set to 115%. I said earlier, I think that might be limited by the firmware. That just might be something that my printer doesn't care about if it's over a certain number. I'm not sure. Um, the print speed that I wound out at was 10 mil per second. It's slower than I would want, but for this one specific use case where you've got a hollow part that's single wall and all you need is the extra strength of that two millimeter wall and I would imagine that some light infill probably would would work and impact this it is faster I printed a version of the tail section of the nose with a normal printer it's got four walls in it so it's almost the same width and it's just it's not as sturdy so you really do get some extra strength from having all the plastic in a layer come out in a single pass in addition to feeling flimsier the tail section that I printed with my standard nozzle took longer. Uh, this print took about six and a half hours, and the one that I printed with the settings for the two mil nozzle took about four and a half hours, roughly. That's a third of the time. The time difference got to be less when we got into the bigger prints, but it does save time. In addition to the other settings I mentioned, one other thing that becomes really important is to print with a skirt. Because that volume at the bottom of the nozzle has to get filled up by the plastic coming into it before it's able to print a two millimeter line, it's really good to preload it. It also makes sure that there's a little glob of plastic that always comes out at the beginning is not in your print. So skirt, 10 millimeter a second, large flow rate. Make sure that you're putting an accurate diameter for your, for your filament into the machine. Make sure your filament is in good shape. If it's old and bubbling or brittle, throw it in the oven at a low temperature for a while. Print temperature a little bit higher than normal, sitting at 210 and a 0.5 mil layer height. All of that empowers this nozzle to make pretty robust, strong prints. I think when I bought this piece of hardware, my expectations were too high. I imagined large volume prints being vomited out at high speed, and that's probably a little unrealistic. After doing all the calibration and getting it to a place where it's printing consistently and at a high quality, I'm very happy to have this as a tool in my kit. There's a specific set of requirements that this is a really good solution for. It works really well. I'm going to continue this experiment of a parametric 3D printed skateboard mold going forward, and I've got some other hardware that promises to spit out a lot of plastic fast that I'm going to be experimenting with in the future with as well. We'll be able to compare and contrast. My expectation though is that the piece of hardware that I'm alluding to and the two millimeter nozzle that I have installed right now are gonna be different tools for different circumstances. The thing that this nozzle does well, which is large hollow parts with thick walls that are really strong and robust, it does excellently. It's well worth all of the work it took to calibrate it and well worth the price. And one of the things that I was hoping to achieve in this video was to lower the barrier to entry for that for anyone who came after me. Hopefully this helped identify some of the problems you might run into if this was a piece of hardware that you chose to use. If you have any interest in the project I was working on with this tool, the 3D printed parametric skateboard mold, I'm going to be continuing work on that project pretty much as soon as the camera cuts. That content should be up on the channel soon. I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it. So stick around with me and see how it finds out. I'll see you soon. Back down in the dungeon and the two mil... We're back down in the dungeon and the two millimeter... <sighs> and the two millimeter... Why can't I say that right now? Millimeter, 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 two millimeter, two millimeter, two millimeter. We're back down in the dungeon and the two millimeter nut. Oh my God, millimeter. I don't mean millimeter, melomel. Mercurial, this is a fly that's just doing laps. It's just Olympic fly. I'm going right back to work on that project as soon as the, God damn it, you <laughs> fly. <laughs> If you have any... <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> I'll see you soon. All right, that's enough. I'm finished is better than perfect. I'm over it. I'm over it. You're dead to me.